it done and not to it but to do it brother let's roll in a world where carolina panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for panthers news and opinions only one podcast roars ferociously it's the c3 panthers podcast The Carolina Panthers face tough decisions as the NFL draft looms. You're listening to the C3 Panthers podcast brought to you by CarolinaCatChronicles.com, where every Tuesday night we chop up the latest Panthers news and opinions from the fan perspective. We've got mock drafts. We've got the Panthers trading up, going after a position group that would make my head explode. And I've got a draft tape that's going to send Panther Nation into a spiral it might break the internet well you stick around folks but you got to hang out with me and my wheel man cody lack what's up my friend time to done it's a tuesday man we are getting closer and closer to the draft your favorite time of year uh so many different options man even though we're lacking that first round pick it really does feel like almost anything can happen like there's almost more options then we would be looking at if we were sitting in the top five or top 10 like we normally are, man. So different publications are putting out their mock drafts. We're going to run down a few different scenarios tonight, talk about a few going ons around the NFL, but Tony Dunn, you know we're going to do it with the best damn Panther fans in all of YouTube. You know them and love them. It's our boy Panther Pickle, Joey the Black Panther. What's up, baby? Charlotte Sports One, what's up, Kyle? My man Jake the Snake F U, what's up, dude? Jorge Marcelo, the real C3 AP, and our boy Ten Tim Estes, Tony Dunn, and never to be outdone is the man himself, the brand ambassador Diesel Skills, who has been a faithful member for 15 months. Tony Dunn, ain't nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. You see the cool tags that uh, C3D's ill skills that Charlotte Sports One, Jake the Snake FU, Jorge, Marcella all have. You can be a C3 super fan for $1.99 and uh, you can get those cool emojis that you can use in the chat, but also get access to additional content as we put it out throughout the season. And uh, hey, it might even get you a spot on in the draft party. Next week we'll be hanging out on Thursday uh, for round one. Um, because we have a C3 annual draft party. I think this will be the 10th, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, yeah. 20, 21, 22, 24. 23, 24, 11th, 11th annual draft party. The first one was when we drafted Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, so we can hang out on Thursday night. We'll be here probably about 20, 30 minutes before the draft starts and hang out through the first round, see if the Carolina Panthers move up into it. But the big show will be Friday night, guys. You want to be here for round two. Uh, and I think they do round three on Thursday, uh, on Friday night, too, maybe two rounds. So we'll be hanging out and watching those top picks, hopefully. As long as the Carolina Panthers don't move anywhere, you should have uh, be there and be on time because the Carolina Panthers will be picking According to right now, 33 and 39. So don't miss the Carolina Panthers selection on the 11th annual C3 live draft party. You can be a part of the show. Call in at 252-228-5098. CK, great to hang out with you again, my friend. Man, just happy to be here. Draft is around the corner. The thing I love about this time of year is once the draft is done, we're pretty much ready for the new year, right? We don't, we don't have as many questions a matter of... You know, we're going to have questions of how do we fill this hole or that hole with the remaining free agents that might be out there if we don't necessarily get the guys that we're, you know, hoping to get in the draft. But the questions around who are we going to draft become obsolete. You really are begin to have your focus pretty, you know, open to what is next year really going to look like. Um, we can start the simulations on. Uh, letting Madden simulate with the new roster what Carolina is going to do next year, things along those lines. Um, but we still got a long trek, man. We got another three months, a little over three months before training camp. 
um, which, you know, is uh, is another thing that we need to have a conversation about with everybody here in the chat about how we want to handle that being in Charlotte and doing some sort of a 3C3 meetup because uh, we didn't get a chance to really do that outside of just hanging out with a couple of the, you know, main guys here. So, uh, you know, we've got some stuff to start planning. So there's some things to look forward to. Oh, we did. Uh, big shout out to Charlotte Sports One, who's been a member for 19 months. That's incredible, guys. Uh, thank you for the support, uh, guys, but you don't have to support. Well, we appreciate the monetary support. I know uh, small things go a long way, right? And when people see there are a lot of C3 super fans out there, that just attracts more. Uh, we appreciate any super chats and any donations from the show, but really what we appreciate most is your time, your attention, and your conversation. Smash thumbs up buttons, share the show. Longest running Panthers podcast out here trying to grow. We thought last year would be the year of C3, 20 C3. Did not turn out how we want it to do. Now we'll be looking into these mock drafts. But I'm with CK on this. Is For me, I know a lot of you people or people that are listening, people out there on the internet, that they enjoy this lead up to the draft. I like the week after the draft getting to know the players, how they fit, how we think that they can work, and what we can learn about the team like uh, CK was saying, but now we've got to try to figure out what this team can do heading into this draft, guys. And look, there's a lot of needs for this team. Like Cody said, who knows, really? There are more possibilities than if you were in the top 10. You just probably like go Marvin Harrison Jr. I saw four quarterbacks going consecutively one, two, three, four, right? Yeah, people think the Giants are going to end up trading down or. Uh, yeah, one of no, the Cardinals, rather, yeah. are going to end up trading down for either the Giants or the Vikings or the Broncos. Yeah, yeah it's it, it's crazy. Quarterback man. heavy. What's wild about this is that the draft could be dominated by quarterbacks, but then there's supposed to be a bananas deep wide receiver class. Like somebody, I just saw yeah. a story. I didn't get to read it. Uh, Mac from WFNZ. Uh, Mac and Bone show in Charlotte. He said it was a good read. I just saw it fly across my Twitter just a few minutes ago. And it was just like the title was something to the effect of it's like, oh, this is the title. It's my tip. It's from Thor Nordstrom at fantasypros.com. Yeah. Oh, I know that guy. It says, my 10,000 word opus on this bananas wide receiver class, including the top 32 ranked with player comps and RAS. So it sounds like there is a lot of skill players going in this draft. And for all that expectation, I fully expect there to be like five defensive players taken in the top 15 then. Because every time they say it's going to be offensive, offensive, or defensive, defensive, for some reason, there's always something that shakes up the NFL draft. So you want to hang out with us on draft night for the party as well. More important, or just as importantly, more fun to me would be that Friday night show. Cody Lack, let's jump into tonight's show. Carolina Panthers face tough decision, decisions as the NFL draft looms. It is a week and two days away. Not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. And I have to ask, what do the Carolina Panthers do? There are a lot of questions, a lot of holes on this team. And that, I think, makes a lot of people happy when it comes to the Carolina Panthers, uh, look, there's a lot of opportunity to improve quickly. But before we get into it, actually, we should probably check the odds on who the Carolina Panthers are going to be drafting. I'll pull that up soon. But if you want to place a bet and you live in North Carolina on who the Carolina Panthers are drafting, I'd go to Bet365. They're sponsoring tonight's show. They're offering new users $150 in bonus bets this month. To receive your bonus bets, all you have to do is sign up for the Bet. 365 using our link, which is in the show description. Receive $150 in bonus bets, even if you lose the bet, that $5 first bet. So you get to have to place that $5 first bet, deposit $10, get $100, $150 in bonus bets. To be eligible for this sign-up bonus, you must sign up through our link, bit.ly slash C365, or use that QR code on the screen. By doing this, by using our link, you not only receive the bonus bets of $150, but you also directly help supporting the podcast. Uh, you can find that link in the episode description. Cody Lack, what do we got tonight? You're the draft guru, and I am just sitting here waiting to get steeped in this speculation. Well, listen, man, anyone can call themselves a guru, 
But at the end of the day, man, unless you are Dan Morgan and you have a through line to someone in that organization, there's no way to know. And there's so many different options for the Carolina Panthers right now at number 33 and 39 specifically. So I figured what we would do, I got this from Panthers.com, is let's look a little bit around um, the media outlets and let's kind of put together what other people are saying that the Panthers should do. So that way we kind of look at our options, what people think we're going to be doing versus what our fans think that we need to be doing. So NFL.com, surprisingly enough, didn't give us any type of wide receiver. They have us going defensive tackle uh, at 33 with Braden Fisk the disruptive uh, three technique out of Florida State University, and Ben Sanat, the fast-rising tight end out of Kansas State. Uh, we've been experimenting with drafting him uh, on our free-for-all mock draft. He's a favorite. Uh, ESPN, Lad McConkey, there's your favorite wide receiver, Tony. There you go. From Georgia. Uh, and also has us trading back down. Now, this brings me to my first question. If you know, uh, a lot of people have us trading potentially down to pick up some more picks or bundling those two picks together to move up a little bit. As of right now, what camp would you say you're in if you're going to talk about moving up or potentially moving down? Which one would be more beneficial to us as we're looking to get a center, a tight end, a wide receiver, a corner, you know? Uh, for me, the answer is simple. And one actually with one caveat, I think CK and I, and we had discussed this maybe a week or two ago, one of the callers came in, called in. And if it's trading down to get like an extra fifth or, you know, like these kind of back end picks or future, whatever, you know, then I'm not really interested in it. Uh, but I am interested in moving back, like say 10 spots or something like that and picking up an extra third round pick. Right. Something that could make a different like a top 100 pick. Like if you could get a top 100 pick in addition to trading back for one of those picks, uh, then I would be interested in that. I think there are too many holes when it comes to or too many needs when it comes to the future of this team, both at cornerback, at linebacker. Um, you can go down the list of every position, arguably on defense, need some help or additions and uh, then. You got to think there's only one res wide receiver on the roster uh, under contract after this season on the roster, and that is Jonathan Mingo. CK, if you had to trade up or down, forward or back, which way are you heading? Oh, dude, I don't know that I, I like where we're at. I don't want to move. I, I Moving up out of the question, right? In my mind, moving up doesn't make any, any sense whatsoever. Um, moving back could because that's when you see some of these these um how do you say it i mean some of these up and coming teams that have found success in the long term have usually done it by creating more assets on their team uh and that means more draft capital but that only means anything if you're actually able to draft well right so right. that's always going to be the, the the deciding factor here really um is how well we actually draft when it comes to this stuff so I can tell you all day that I want to move back, but I really we got to have some confidence in who's in the GM role for us to actually do that. Cody, I'll make one more point about trading back, and then you can take over for mm -hmm. trading up. I think this is like a, when we talk about um, potentially drafting, say, a center, right, or a corner, and then this need for a wide receiver. People get like if you think of like when you say all of these skill players are out there and then you're going to maybe take a, a, a center or a guard or something like that. Some people might feel like it's sort of a reach in that way when you are sacrificing that potential reach for a good skill player where you need the help where need and BPA often collide. But for me, I think when you trade back, so say if you were able to trade that 33 and then say have a 39, a 44, and a 64, I think then you can yeah. get that center, and it feels like less of a reach, or you get that center, the wide receiver, the middle, uh, the a linebacker, and then the center maybe at like yeah. 
78 or something like that. So that's why I don't think the class of player outside of maybe one specific player that if you're in love with somebody, to me, I don't think moving back 10 spaces when you have so many needs really puts you out of the running for important and good players. Yeah, it definitely does. And it also depends on how strong the draft is at certain positions. Right. So, I mean, you know, if there's a bunch of wide receivers still on the board, well, instead of taking one now, maybe it does benefit you to slide back a couple of spaces and, you know, pick up on more players. And I do think that this is a good draft to do it. And, you know, look, I know we all want to move on from the days of, of Scott Fitterer, but I do think we have to remember that Dan Morgan and Fitterer were good friends. And that first year that Fitterer was here, moving he was back, moving back, down. Back. Almost he was too trying much, to, in a way. Yeah, well, it's like he was trying to lay the foundation by getting a bunch of young, talented players and, and to be able to build from there. Now, it's good in theory, but we didn't draft the right players, and none of those dudes ended up working out for us. So it makes you wonder about the other end of that spectrum, Tony. What, what if year would that have been that he did all the backwards movement? Right. That what what year was what that? Year was that? Uh, that was 2020. No, he wasn't here that early. That no, was 21, 21. 21, 21. Right, because I forgot that uh uh Marty Herney was here with Matt Rule for one year. Could you believe we had both of those two twits together? Good lord, what a time. Um but, Interesting. So, uh, here, go, continue, and uh, I, I, we're gonna did go. Did you have the, the odds? Did you have the odds? I, of, I wasn't um, able to find them on Bet Three Sixty Five. I right, well, my, the computer. other end of what, the other end of what I was gonna say, and Tony, this is the one that I felt would be interesting to uh, put in front of you. Maybe let's do the opposite. Instead of trading down and filling a bunch of holes, maybe let's move up. Instead of taking the best of the rest. Maybe let's move up for your favorite position, baby. Let's go and grab a tight end for your boy Bryce, for him to have that Greg Olson type of figure in front of him for the foreseeable future. Now, Tony, I know you might not love the position, but he is a bulldog. And I know that counts for something for you. Oh, certainly, so, certainly. This is like uh this would be interesting, right? Yeah. One is uh I don't think uh, the Panther. I think he's going to go too high for the Panthers to be actually in the running for him. But here is the thing. He, Brock Bowers would put to the test my conviction about what, like I either would be solidified in saying you should never draft this type, this tight end in the top 15 or the first round period. Right. And this generational tight end. Or, but here's the thing is that if the Panthers did do it, I would be rooting for him, not only because he's a Panther, but because of that Georgia connection with my wife's family yeah. and stuff like that. So like this would be the real test case for if my position is right or wrong. And Tony, from a prospect position, he does everything that you want, man. You can put him on the line. Dude, if you play at Georgia, you have to be able to run block and pass protect. Not to mention, this dude is dynamic over the middle, which is where Bryce is most effective historically across the middle of the field. I think that would be a huge safety weapon for Bryce uh, going forward. And, you know, the reason why we're bringing up it up. Idea? Where'd you come up with this crazy well, idea? I didn't this even come up with drive? this. Yeah, I know. Where did you find this? So this is Ian Valentino of the 33rd team who put this forward. Now, very unrealistically, he has us trading up with New Orleans at 14. Talk about but, making it more expensive. Uh, yeah, for sure. But if you were to move up for, and, and only give up your 33rd and 39th pick, I mean, maybe that is the type of move that you do make. That's a relatively it's small price to pay for someone who was saying is a generational tight end prospect. Um, do we have, are we missing, uh, we have the 33rd and 39, but when do we, we don't pick, oh, we guess we pick 65, 65. 101. So if you were able to get like a top talent and then you're picking at the back end of the second, basically, 
you know what I'm saying? You're kind of right in that same. If you consider the 33 pick a kind of first round pick, like so high in the right. second, then this it's is kind of is. a back end. So, you know, I mean, it's technically. Yeah. Fine. I think it would be expensive, CK. Uh, the Carolina Panthers, to me, have too many needs going forward. The idea of building um, a team. Yeah. Uh, that so much is going to have to be improved over time and quickly in some, in some ways because of how desperate the Panthers situation would be. Right. But also to Cody or to uh, Cody's point is that if you are desperate to get this thing cooking, then what we have seen is a true investment in Bryce young on the offensive line. Um, and this arguably would be, the best of both worlds in so many ways is that if you want a receiver so bad, you've got a tight end receiver who could be, or at least are they're projecting to be like a, in the, I mean, I hate to use hall of famers like Kelsey or right. uh, Tony Gonzalez or whoever. I wonder who the comp is CK though, before we get to a comp of that, this would cost a little bit. Would the risk be the re worth the reward? Um, Honestly, the moving up to 14 with the two second round picks, I think people in New Orleans would be pissed uh, to give up uh, that an early first round draft pick that, I mean, you know, say what you will, but 14 is still pretty early in the first round, right? Um, you're still talking about guys who have elite expectations, right? And you could say that deeper into the first if you wanted to. So I'm, I'm not sure New Orleans would be excited about that. I don't think it's a logical... Um, trade i don't think there is a shot in hell that new orleans is going to do anything that is going to help our team be better this year um especially with a division right now that some would say is completely up for grabs the last thing you want to do is help did he is, freeze oh did i freeze i'm here can you hear me i think uh he started getting shot at in whatever game he's playing oh i ain't playing nothing can you hear me uh, yeah. yeah you're froze oh, yeah. your camera oh, froze that. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, oh, you're back. You're back. Welcome back, CK. Right, cool, voice cool. that makes a moist. No, yeah. So I don't think it. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, would believe that the Saints are going to trade with us right now. Um, I just don't think that that's a reality that's going to happen. But I don't think I'm excited about the idea of moving into the first round. As I mentioned before, trading up Great. just doesn't doesn't seem it's even though the jury is still out on Bryce Young, the decision to trade up if it didn't work out is such a long lived consequence. All yes. we're going to be able to do, all we're going to do is for the next four or five years is look at who all was available at 33 and 39 yeah. and <laughs> compare see who is better than, uh, cause there is going to be players. There's going to be at least two players that will be better than anybody picked at 14 that come after 33 or 39 may not happen this year, but it's going to happen in the next four years. You're going to see that happen. It happens with every draft. So we're going to constantly see that uh, comparison all the time. Illinois, so by Jones the way, this, this is, up. this is six foot three, 245 pound, uh, mm -hmm. brought Bowers doing a backflip. Yeah, so man. Um, Illinois Jones yeah. brought this up as he is a small tight end better at the slot. I mean, um, I wouldn't call him small. You know uh, what I mean? Who, like, for I the position. Comp, I've been trying to Google who his comp would uh, be. His like, comp is George Kittle. From a size perspective, George Kittle it seems like he's a little bigger than him. He's like 6'4". They're around the same ballpark. Like, uh, give, or, give or take an inch, you know? Let's see. George Kittle is... 6'4", I think. Yeah, 6'4", 250. You know, and 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 to be honest, is like I mean, you're betting on you're you're betting on him being a dynamic offensive player uh, and yeah. a receiving tight end more. Exactly. So, I mean, you want him to be able to do both, right? To not be a liability. I think a, a mock draft I saw had him going in the top ten, though. So, do you know how mm. like how expensive it would be to move up that far? I think CK's right. And on top of that, man, not only are you risking it just by moving up that far and putting it all in on a player. 
you're putting it in a position that I believe is always over talked at this point in the year where we hear that the next oh, yeah. generational tight end, this generational Kyle Pitts uh, to uh, Hunter Henry to OJ Howard to yeah. all these guys yeah. who are going to be the next fucking awesome thing ever. And uh, all these tight ends that are the awesome thing ever. We're like always taking the second and third. Yeah. Except for I'm some or somebody's gonna be like, well, remember Tony Gonzalez or whatever, or somebody like that. So the other the if we still had Marty Herney, I'd say move into the first. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like he should be a consult a first round consultant. I mean, I <laughs> like, he'd just be like this. We just need you for a day, Marty. You know, if if he could if if we could have him just for that first pick, if then sure, trade up. But what we need is we need honestly, these two second round picks could be i think we need to have them because yeah i feel like anybody can hit on a first round pick right it's not easy but anybody can, can there uh, you know what do they say about a broken clock right and, and you're more likely to be right in the first round than you are in the later rounds i think where dan morgan needs to prove where what he has as our gm has to come with those two second round draft picks if those are consistent performers in their first year and uh, able to improve this team and seen as not a liability, then I think that uh, that's a win for Dan Morgan. I think that's more that that would prove more about Dan Morgan than trading up and picking a guy who's a stud in the, at fourteen. Yeah, you got to wonder. Um, you know, if we looked at the draft order, the second round. Actually, I'm gonna pull it up real quick to kind of mm-hmm. mock this, which I hate that. Um. The idea of trading back, right, would involve a team that needs a wide receiver, really. You know, I mean, there might be another position. Well, you know, there might... Most of the scenarios are is like a Bo Nix or someone falls to 33 and then someone wants to go up and get them. So maybe you're talking Atlanta. Well, see, they have so many offensive weapons right now. Las Vegas. Can I act? I think that it's also worthy of talking about. Do you really feel like tight ends were a focus in last year's Tampa Bay offense? Yeah. Well, actually, they made the most out of that one tight end that we didn't even know his fucking right. name. Right. I, I know they didn't have necessarily somebody who was like a, um, a, a world beater tight end. Right. But, but like a big, the Mike where, Evans was, was the, Mike was Evans a, was right. the, the, the guy focus, that was right? the focal point. And so the point you, is that not only we, why would we want to draft a tight end if we your system not, specific yeah. isn't you but know you almost got to we'll go see. back and look at some of those uh, Seattle teams yeah and see how important they their didn't. tight ends they weren't. were and I don't they remember weren't. anybody just being a dominant force at mm-hmm. tight end in that decade with Russell Wilson under the no, Pete Carroll it was all those wideouts it was that quick slot. It was, uh, you know, when you look at what Lockett ha- had been and uh, or even Marshawn Lynch going Mar- back, you yeah. know, I mean, I can't remember yeah. a tight end for somebody in the chat. will figure it out. Um, OK, so here is uh, I think CK and I are both in. Look, is I I think I'm open to moving back if it gets you something for very little. Right. You know, if it's a future third. I'm even okay with that moving back six spots or something. You so know, is both the, are, are both of those picks too much? It would you know, to move up for the thirty thirty and thirty nine. Is that too much? If it's that's what it would somewhere. cost to. But I do, mean, you're, do you you're feel like that's, that's, that's too much. Do you feel like that's too much? You're yeah. giving you're giving up two late round first round draft picks in my mind. If okay. you look at it from that perspective, all because right. So you know now there's you know there's going to be people who that that are graded as a first round talent who are going to be there available at 33 and 39. And so if we trade those away, we are essentially giving away two firsts. Okay. So let me pose to you another scenario, which for the most part, I would agree. It's one of those things where if the Panthers front office and Dan Morgan has conviction on a player, I'm not mad at them going to get their guy. I'm truly not. But at the same time, I see how your prudent mind would, would say let's, Let's add to the roster. Let's move back a little bit. But let me present to you another scenario. Okay, maybe you don't move up, but maybe you take one of those two picks. And since most of our drafts that are out there 
have the Panthers taking a wide receiver in some combination at 33 or at 39. Or maybe we still have the option of going to trade for a wide receiver. And it came out recently, um, according to the latest odds, that the Panthers are 6-1 to one odds and currently the number two favorite to land Brandon Ayuk from the San Francisco 49ers. So here's the other scenario. Would you rather use those picks to just draft players and let the front office do their job? Or would you prefer to go out and get someone who is proven, someone who is dynamic at the position, and someone that you'll be able to put in your offense and depend on for the foreseeable future? Uh, what do you think about Brandon Ayuk? Interesting, interesting for me is to me, if this is a pick for player, I think there's far less risk in getting Brandon Ayuk than there is in drafting one of these receivers that you guys are just showing me all these draft videos or the combine. Right. I, I saw also, somebody with the leg. Le, what is the guy name? The leg. And somebody's like showing him working out, doing a cone drill. And they're like, this don't look like Mingo to me. I'm like, so tired. Look, look at this 12 second yes, video. The and, fuck it does. Like Jonathan Mango didn't have right. Like he didn't look him cool doing that. Yeah. Yeah. What you have to say? I was gonna say that uh I, I and you may have to remind me, and there might be people who can confirm that I may be wrong on this, but I don't know many I can't recall any wide receivers coming out of Shanahan's offense into another team that has actually been good. Oh, I don't even know any that have left either, though. Oh, they've had a, quite a few people. Like, um, I'm trying to think of like a Debo wide... Samuel's the only person that they've paid the entire yeah, time. Yeah, but they've wide just... Receiver. I don't know if they've had big names, though, either. And I'm trying to go back to Washington. I think Santana Moss might have been real good with him. I don't know if he was back there. Uh, here's the thing, though, Cody, is if it's just pick for player... The answer is yes for me, right? There's so much less risk. There's so much, you know, it's like you got a player too. The other thing I think too is like what's awesome about like, or everybody talks about the potential of these players. And there is, there's great potential. Somebody can, but they also take time to develop into the NFL. And while we looked at a player that they told us was the most NFL ready prospect in so many long years and Bryce Young, and we saw that it was even a learning curve for the smartest dude and the greatest scores and all of this. So there's a learning curve for all these players. Sometimes they're just able to overcome it quick, you know, faster than others. So you have the risk in some ways of the unknown you have, even if they are pan out, there is that um, learning curve, but the benefit of a longevity and the cheaper contract, the caveat, or I guess the, perplexing part of this is not just picking player you have to think contract now right yeah, so, so if that, you then did, you gotta here. think is like how much you're gonna pay them can you allocate those assets at this time the panthers do have money coming up in the future so if like they would have to if they're gonna make this trade cody they're gonna have to go into it knowing they gotta make uh they gotta pay them and i'll let you comment on that and also how would i you can deontay johnson look or not deontay Ge what's his name is that his name? Yeah, our, Deontay Johnson. Yeah, like how would they Deontay look together? Jack Deontay Jackson, I think. No, not, not not Deontay Jackson. Well, whoever that guy is that we just got from, how would they look <laughs> together? <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, would you, if they did look real good together, would you have any odds of keeping both of them? You would have to oh, sign man. two I wide do, receivers at one time. But that's what you need, though. Like, I would almost rather do that than you know, hope and pray for another second round receiver to somehow be a number one wide receiver for us. You know, like Brandon Ayuk is that type of guy. Uh, I think him and Deontay, uh, Jackson or Johnson, whatever his fucking name is, I think they're going to be a good duo. Uh, I think they're dynamic. Uh, and I, I would, I would love that man, because it, again, like the amount of time that you have to fully assess the young talent on the Carolina Panthers, you know, that clock ticks every single day, man, for Bryce, for Icky, for JC Horn, yeah. for all these dudes. So you really have to put as much talent on this team as possible. 
And man, you just upgraded your entire offensive line in free agency. Now adding two high class wide receivers. That's what the doctor ordered for this offense. I'd rather do that than take another spin on uh, some so, random wide receiver at 39. So here's the question then. Um, because Ayuk is, you know, he's he's been a, 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 a solid player for them for the past three, four years, really, right? Every season he's gotten a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. Um, you know, when it comes to his total yardage, I'll put it that way. Um, what, I mean, do you really think, number one, do you think that out of the two first, uh, second rounds, they're going to accept 39 for him, number one? Number two, he's going to be demanding a contract that is bigger than what Debo got, right? Um, because he has outperformed is Debo he? multiple seasons. I don't know. Is I tell you this is a uh, good point, CK, and that's that like the how much this is. He's never had a hundred catches, right? Now that is an offense that they spread it around. They, right? they There's spread a lot, it around. Like, they run a lot. Run the ball. Yeah, exactly. This is pretty crazy, though. I think this is insane. He's had he had thirteen hundred yards last year on seventy five catches. He had a thousand yards the year before on one hundred and seventy. I mean, one hundred and seventy seventy eight catches. Um, touchdowns eight and seven. <sighs> is he worth? Those are some. Those are impressive yardage numbers. They're um, impressive, yeah. The touchdown. I mean, is like. You could see touchdowns being more if he was more of a focal point in an offense. So I'm not worried about that. Deontay Johnson had a thousand yard season. I looked him up too, and it was Johnson. He got a 1,100 yards on 107 catches, right in 2021. So Ayuk, when he gets the ball, he makes a lot of it, dude. Yeah, he's making the most of it now. How much of that? My question with Brandon Ayuk is he really that good? which I don't feel like I should be talking any junk about a guy who got 1,300 yards right. on 75 catches. I'm not going to worry and about that. But are durable, you shopping a little hungry financially yeah. for this player? Yeah. Are you going to end up paying him as a top-tier wide are. receiver and him being a we're gonna pay him that. or something? The, we're, like, here's the thing is you've got to keep in mind they are not going to trade him to a team that he doesn't want to go to. Because a part of this trade is going to be required that he actually wants to sign the contract as an extension, because that is his issue right now. That's why he is saying, you know, that's why the rumors are he's, you know, requesting a trade, which, by the way, is, you know, his uh, agent is coming out saying that that's not true. Um, but it, it, you're, you've got to keep, he is not going to go from San Francisco 49ers, who have been a contender with Brock Purdy on, the, on their team, to a team that isn't ready to go to the playoffs. He's just not going to. There's he drafted. Um, this is, I think, is his uh, final year. So I think. Uh, I mean, does he, he get that? Does drafted? he get that say so? I mean, if he, if if we're the team that's looking to pay him the money that he wants, I, I mean, unless he yeah, has, that's a what, he'll go to that team if they're yeah, paying. He's going to go the wherever point. the hell he's no. told to, man. No, no, not that, where well, he's told no. to. Whoever's going to pay him, right? No, is, but you've got to keep in mind a team is not going to trade for him unless he's willing to agree to a contract first, right? And so that's similar to how this whole Brian Burns thing happened. When we traded him, they had already worked out their contract with him prior to us officially pulling the 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 uh, court on on trading him. Well, that's and not so, entirely true. Well, that part is entirely true. But right, but that's my did point. Did the is, 49ers take the fifth year option on IU? Was he a because first if they did, yeah, he turned out he's a 25th overall pick. So, if you like, then it comes to the question: Is he going to hold out? Right, and I do think if you were going to make this trade, you would have some sense that you were going to be able to reach some agreement. Um, this year is this basically they did the fifth year option. This is his fifth year coming okay. into 2024. So, so it would if it would have been ideal for us to have traded Brian Burns or for someone else to get that year out of him plus the additional contract, maybe that is a good thing for the team acquiring him. I don't think I think Cody, I don't think his destination is gonna be his big hiccup. It's the paycheck. Because if it was the definite the destination, he would stay right the fuck where he's at. Right, but yeah, they're not but willing I to mean, pay him more how, than what they paid Debo. Right. That's but, the how, problem. but how many times are we going to flinch at these paychecks? Like, I, I, eventually, you're going to have to pay to play. 
Like everybody wants us to get better as a as a team, but yet a lot of like, fans they don't want to wait to develop these players the two to three years that we're talking about. And that it's takes like we've time. Done this for so long. I think when we talk, that's why I get so irritated about the people with the draft, and they're like, "Look at my draft and doing all this," and I'm like. First, there's a risk of those players ever working out, right? Like, is the, uh, you know, is that they're not a hit, a lock. We can go back and look at all the Panthers players that have been drafted that haven't worked out. But even if they do work out, there is that learning curve. This is an interesting point from Illinois' Jones. He said, if you don't trust Morgan, you'll want the proven a commodity in Iuke. If you do trust Dan, go into the draft for it. It's a great point yeah. right there. Is like, the thing is, Illinois, uh, we don't know if we can tr- is whether we should or trust. It's this is going to be his first draft ever, right? And uh, so when every time we have faith in any of these guys, it's it is sort of just sort of blind optimism. We all and I was went back and looked at this. Look at this: the Carolina Panthers draft in twenty twenty one that they did all that movement. What? Well, we have thought about this at that point. We went J.C. Horn, Terrace Marshall here. I can put this graphic up. It's pretty cool, actually, from the Panthers site. Uh, with that movement and negotiation, J.C. Horn, Terrace Marshall Jr., Brady Christensen, Tommy Tremble, Shuba Hubbard, Davion Nix, Keith Taylor Jr., Deontay Brown, Shia Smith, Thomas Fletcher, Phil Hoskins, like, we walked out of that draft probably going, J.C. Horn, fuck it. Well, we did, right? Remember, he's like, oh, this guy's a fucking dog. And MJ still- was the first round before he got hurt. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, Brady Christensen, man, uh, it was like, it might, might be a steal there. Tommy Tremble, everybody, you know what I mean? Ch- like Chuba Hubbard, yeah. I think exactly. it all, we all knew that this was the fucked up draft when the Thomas Fletcher pick hit. <laughs> like, that was the jinx of this draft was and i tell you this is uh look deontay brown none of these guys none of them panned out they did play though shy smith played keith taylor played chuba hubbard played tommy trimble brady christensen jc horn in some ways they're not those aren't that's not a terrible draft chuba as well by the way yeah yeah i mean in some ways if tommy trimble can somehow find a life under this new regime and J.C. Horn can have a healthy season. We might come back to this and go, you know what? We got three picks, four pick, three, you know, that worked out. The problem is none of these guys have worked out. The guys who have played haven't been good. Cody, to me, this is the jinx, the Thomas Fletcher jinx right here, this draft. And what it reminds me a lot of is the jinx that still the, the draft or the player that haunts me the most, Harrison Butker. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Right? It's like Harrison mm. Butker, you drafted him to put pressure, or I think you drafted him late. I think we did draft him late to put pressure on Graham Gano, but then you got what, cold. You got scared. You got cold feet going with a rookie kicker, and you let him go, and then he turned out to be great. This is the dude, second That's one game. of my biggest draft regrets of recent history, dude. Yeah. The fact that we don't have Harrison Butker. And who that guy became, dude? I wanted to let go of Graham Gano then. Me too. Uh, I, hate I wanted Graham Gano. to go with hate Graham Gano. Harrison Butker. I, I remember talking with you about that. It. I mean, that I that was a block me. By the way, that was a dumb decision for us to do. I mean, number one, you're going with a guy taking a the the older guy who isn't going to be as much of a long term answer for you, uh, and he's going to be on a rookie contract. You're letting that guy go like that. That in hindsight, man, that is always a bad decision you brought him in for competition you drafted him and he did a very good job like he he was fighting in that competition against graham gano at the time it'd be different if there was a head and shoulders difference between those two but there wasn't the Uh, only people that are going to disagree with us ck right now that are listening to this are going to point out now graham gano did get his better seasons after that, yeah. After that moment. So right. they're going to go out and talk about the 63-yarder or 61-yarder he kicked at that moment. And he has actually turned out to be more consistent since that moment than yeah. he was before, right? Um, and also, but the the similarity to that to me in this, in, in this comparison, CK, is that 
you draft this player to put con, you know, kind of bring in the, you know, the younger generation. Thomas Fletcher, you do this, and then all you do is do is you can keep signing JJ Jansen, which I like. They like I don't want him to not like why do that if you're gonna then just keep signing JJ in the future. I wonder if that's just telling you how bad Thomas Fletcher was, right, or <laughs> how bad um, of a pick this was. Well, I think like also- who drafts a long snapper? Period. No, oh, I know, I know. Well, the thing with like even with JJ Jansen, right? The thing with him is he has. Even for his age, that dude puts in more effort than anybody else on the team. Outside of just being a long snapper, that dude is always almost the first person down the field ready to try to get that tackle on the first, you know, on that uh, on that returner. Right? He has had he has had a lot of major plays for us. So I understand the want to keep him in the uh, in the loop, but or keep him on the team. Uh, but I agree, man. We got to get younger. We got to be able to develop some people and. Uh, you know, I think ultimately that has to happen through the draft. The idea, see, the thought is like, even with Ant, he's in the, he's talking about how a second round pick isn't that expensive for Brandon. Ayuk. you're not, again, this is the same reason why Brian Burns didn't get a higher, you know, trade value. It's not just that second round pick. You're talking about a, probably a fully guaranteed contract, or at least as close to a fully guaranteed contract as you can get. And probably a top three wide receiver contract in the league. When you look at what his numbers have been the past three years, um, I just but don't arguably better than Brian Burns numbers were for his position group. Right. Oh, like, for sure. like, and I mean, I, you, like, I understand what you're getting to here is like, are these yeah. numbers as, but like Br Brian Burns commanded that and didn't even have close to the dominant numbers. I, you 1300 uh, yards. Yeah. I mean, that's a freaking good damn season for a wide receiver who, is got there's an on an offense that goes running, run, run, run all over the place. I mean, and then Cody, Kittle, and just the last McCaffrey, point on Tom, last point on Thomas Fletcher though, CK, is that it's one thing to move on to the younger player in a position group that commands a lot of money, right? JJ Jansen, for all we know, he might be the highest paid lines long snapper in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like. Eight hundred thousand dollars more than the other guy. It's not like that Brian Burns contract of one hundred fifty million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, so not and only at a certain point you have to pay to play, man. Like, I mean, it's, it, like it, you're it's not saving money. Thing. It's not like you're yeah, like, oh, we're gonna get like, young and get five years out of this guy before yeah, we gotta and, sign and a contract. Again, I really feel like people aren't hearing me, man. That window that we have to do something, anything with Bryce Young. As a as a young player, as a franchise quarterback, you have to take advantage Two of years. that window. And that time is right now, man. By the way, if you're in the chat, let us know, man. Either YouTube is acting funny or we only have one viewer right now on YouTube, which is pretty wild. But wow. I think YouTube has been acting up. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you guys, mm -hmm. if you couldn't find us on YouTube, if YouTube's giving you problems, we're on X. We're on Facebook. Yeah. We're on Rumble tonight, too. Well, nobody's, uh, there hasn't been a chat for three minutes. So that's concerning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me check the stream. Uh, yeah, one Kyle viewer says is one, a lie. Kyle says one viewer is a lie. Two viewers. All yeah, right. We got, we'll we got, you yeah. YouTube, YouTube's going through some, through some issues. Uh, you want to do some, uh, cat calls, Tony? Uh, I don't even know if we have any. Let me see. Uh, um, Let's do yeah, this look, at all, look at all the good people coming in now to, to tell us that we got some viewers. Let me see if we got. Oh, we've got one call. All right, let's do it. Hey, hey we only have one. So if y'all want your voice to be heard, it's not too late. Call in at 252-228-5098 and have your voice heard on the longest running Panthers podcast in the history of the world, dude. Tony Dunn. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from these people. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It and feels two, good, like... Yo, what's up, C3? It's Anthony from Charlotte. Hope y'all boys what's are up, having a Tuesday. What's up, man? Uh, calling in about 8.09 here. Uh, I did, to be honest, I completely forgot it was Tuesday. Uh, I've been so busy. 
But uh, I just wanted to call and hope y'all boys are doing um, doing okay. And uh, the draft is um, next Friday, Saturday, something like that. So, you know, finally going to get some movement on the team, going to get some new players. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I've given all my thoughts up until this point on what I think the team should do. Um, so not really much to talk about from that perspective. But I will say that um, – I just want to bring something up regarding something else, and this is just for a couple people. Um, and they know – the people know who I'm talking to, but when when we – when you are um, able to acquire an elite player and you're not – you're also saying, well, he comes with this big contract, it's almost like, y'all – no one's going to take a discount to come here right now. They just, they aren't. Um, so I don't understand why we would be, that would be the reason to deter anyone from not wanting to come here or like being like, oh yeah, I don't want this player because we're going to have to pay him. Well, it's like, guess what? I hear you. Man. If you have a great linebacker. You're going to have to pay him. If you have a great wide receiver, you're going to have to pay him. Like, were we not supposed to pay Derek Brown? And I just think a lot of fans are traumatized from um, a lot of the dumbass trades that the organization has made, um, trading for players that are not an elite caliber. And that's, pro- that's probably the reason that they've been scared off from that. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But the person, the player I'm talking about is Brandon Ayuk. And I know, yes, I keep bringing him up. Well, anything can happen. And You know, he may get traded. He may not get traded. We'll see what happens. But the Panthers are second best odds to get him. And I don't think that's a coincidence considering that, you know, they've definitely, I'm assuming they've done some moves behind the scenes to try to get some receivers. And um, we'll see what happens, man. I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, we're going to have to pay whoever's good. Like, if we draft that player, if we, um, trade for that player like that's just how the league works man and I know we just went through this Brian Burns thing and I don't want that to happen to any other player but yeah those are all my thoughts I mean I like how we're potentially interested in that Michigan cornerback I think Dan's looking at the right guys man I really do I think we're going to draft some dogs and I'm very excited it's going to be an interesting draft it's going to be a great show you know I'll be with you boys on Saturday or whatever you're doing it Anthony from Charlotte, give me your thoughts. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Dogs is what Anthony said Dan Morgan is looking for. And I agree 100%, man. Like, we're the, we're the Panthers. We've been the bottom of the barrel in the NFL for the past, what, five seasons now? Like, if you're ever going to get someone to come here, you're going to have to break the bank open for them. And I don't think that that's um, something that, that we should be afraid to do if it's the right player to do it for. But Deontay Johnson and go and get Brandon Ayuk, I I really do think that you would have the makings of some really potent offense here in Charlotte. And I'm not opposed to giving up that money. And, you know, even to what Eleanor Jones says, it's not that I don't trust Dan Morgan. In fact, I do. If Dan feels like him and this front office can nail every single draft pick, I'm down for it. Well, that let was them, his point. Let them do it. If you trust that, then right? You that's what stay. I'm saying. But I also am of the mindset that if ever you have an opportunity to get a proven top tier talent, I have no problem paying that money. I, I had a problem paying Brian Burns. When he was saying he was that top tier talent, when the play never dictated that he was, but Brandon I do I do think uh, really has earned that level of contract that he's looking for. I thought you brought up a very important point earlier about the window with Bryce Young. Right. Um, right. Look, is the window for any player? right, is there's a limit, right? And particularly with the turmoil that the Carolina Panthers have gone through. But then you add in this. It's like basically there's less leash for struggle in year two for Bryce Young than he would be if he was a player that you thought differently about. Like think of like the leash that was given essentially to Trevor Lawrence 
in, in a sense is like because you have this belief in his physical skill set so much and all these other things that you go, oh, like in his past, you know, so you can have all of these reasons why you can negate the six, you know, the or try to push away the struggles. But the struggles for Carolina were so difficult last year and not not because of Bryce Young, but he is part he was he's associated with it. Right. right? So it didn't sure. it didn't his window closed faster last year than it would have if he was a, a different type of player in a sense of a guy that's the physicality or yeah. something like this. Then you add to this, Cody, is that you've got an unknown and a new new coach, right? So, like, really, Bryce Young has a t- three, a t- two more years with the Carolina Panthers to completely convince you that he is the truth, right? right. And this year has to get you closer to thinking that he is than right. farther like, you away. Just be, you don't want to see average from Bryce Young this year. You want to start to see noticeable flashes. improvement. You want to see flashes of yeah. the player that you traded up to number one to draft, yes. even when you had other quarterbacks available because you felt Bryce was the difference maker in a draft that had Anthony Richardson and C.J. Stroud and Will Levis, they said Bryce was the guy. Now, because of how bad last year was, you have to go above and beyond to try and move right. this in the other to make, direction. You have to make up for lost ground. Yes. You have to make up for uncertainty. And much was way. lost after that. And it, last and it might not be fair. It might not be right. But it's going to be the reality. At yes. the end of season two, mm. you will have a much firmer conviction about Bryce Young. It will be, and if it, and if you don't, then that's bad, right? Like if it's just like, uh, I still don't know, that doesn't help his case. Then you're going in again to next year. You're, you're basically then saying, okay, we can go one more year. We're going to try it. Maybe yeah. we'll give this coach another year. Or you're sitting there in the top five, and you're going, well, maybe we should. Maybe we should yeah, pull the trigger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You want, you want to erase any doubt. Yes. If, if, if the Panthers are picking in the top 10, you want to know, okay, we're going to draft another t- up, you know, a wide receiver or a defensive end. We have no need to draft a quarterback in the top or 10. Or even consider because we it. Saw, we saw the type of progression from Bryce that we want to see that uh, to me actually makes the trade for a Uke or a, or a player. Of that count. Yeah. More important because even if you put the 33rd and you go and get a wide receiver, like the odds of him. Yeah. He might be pretty good, but is he yeah. even going to be enough right out the gate to help Bryce Young move the needle? Well, I mean, with Deontay Johnson, I mean, do add, well, that's do right. I add think Bryce, more... I think Ayuk and Deontay Johnson would give Bryce Young a better chance of moving sure. the needle in positive belief than putting a rookie out there with him. Sure. Now, it could work. It could work, and you want it to work, and you would think, man, you might even be able to get a player that's better. But the odds of it at that moment, there's more risk with that. And right now, you really need, if everything, if you want to build, if you think you need to draft a wide receiver, like it is an imperative to get Bryce Young weapons, I think you really got to be open to the idea of going out and getting Ayuk. And he probably, would he be cheaper contractually than T. Higgins, you think? Or is he going to be? That I don't know. I mean, they're probably looking in that same tier of contract. But Higgins just came out and said that he anticipates playing for Cincy this year. Yeah, so they said they're not going to trade him. I heard that and stuff. But uh, that's, I way, think that's a great point. Is think about the window. Yeah. And you almost are risking more for Bryce Young's success by drafting a player than right, you are that's what risking I'm saying. It hoping, financially. Hoping that another second yeah. round pick, you know, drafting Xavier is like that. Let him look just like Jonathan Mango. For a year, if that's what you know, everyone thinks. Brandon so LaFell. 
But now you're hoping, you're gambling yeah. that he isn't another Jonathan Mango. And you're not just gambling party. on him. You're gambling on, on Bryce party. that way. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I agree with Anthony. I would do this a thousand percent. By the way, Tony, uh, AJ Brooks put in the chat, uh, resources have been exhausted is the message I get when trying to like the video. So there is oh. some definite YouTube issues. Man, C3 on. broke the internet. Yeah, we appreciate everyone hanging out with us, though, man. Hit that like button, even though, it's, uh, even though it's fucking up. I mean, but hit that like, hit that subscribe, or YouTube, go back and do it, uh, retweet. You know, you know all the stuff, and and really, you guys just being here is so incredibly important to me. Yeah, man. Uh, it really is. Like the idea of me thinking about what the hell we're going to talk about. I set the show up. I sent Cody a message like an hour before. I said I really have no idea what the fuck we're going to talk about. He said, I got it, bro. I got it. I got you. Let's go and take another call. I think we got Kyle next. Hey, guys. It's Kyle, known as Charlotte Sports One. Uh, oh, Charlotte Sports show. One. What's up, bro? Uh, you're doing all the right things. You know, What's up, Kyle? We're having all the good conversations, man. I've been loving it. Appreciate um, you, brother. My biggest takeaway is we don't, in my personal opinion, I don't need a wide receiver at 33 or 39 as long as the best player available fits our scheme and is ranked and we feel that they're better as a player. Um, I'm not going to get with the media and be like, oh, we have to have a receiver. Or fans, pick, even. Blah, blah. I, I don't believe that's the case. Um, but super, super excited <clears throat> for next week. Uh, ready for some real Panthers news, you know, to uh, – keep the conversation going and where we're going to go from here. So, uh, yeah, hit thanks us for up. doing what you guys do and, uh, keep on us. Hit us up, man. Uh, keep check us out on, uh, we're going to have a lot of opportunities for guests to come on, uh, fans to interact live and be part of the podcast, not only on Thursday night, but the Friday free for all night will be the Friday free for all draft night. It's going to be C3. We're going to call it C3 draft party with a free for all <clears throat> something. So we won't, we won't just totally diss on the, Free for, but like, hey, it's a perfect night for fans oh, yeah. to come in on a Friday free for all and watch the draft. So come and check us out. I think this is a great opportunity. And really, this is a uh, stick around, folks. In just a minute, after Cody pulls up this little tidbit right here, um, I'm going to break the internet too. I kind of agree with him here. I think he's got a point. Look, fans want a wide receiver. You want it. You need it. You got all of this. We get so hung up in the draft about need, 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 need. And then all of a sudden, I saw Mike K put out a cool tweet today. Mike K for the Charlotte Observer. Go ahead and subscribe to the Charlotte Observer. You can get it for like three bucks, man, right now. And get, I mean, help these, help small. Well, I won't say small. They're a fucking conglomerate. But newspapers might as well be coming down to our level at this point. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, $1.99 to be a C3 super fan, uh, $3 a month to get full um, Charles Observer coverage. But he said this is like, I'm not really into mock drafts and picking who we're going to pick. I'm more interested into the ideas that are going to throw the draft into chaos in a sense. Yeah. Like, it's like, what is going to be the thing that happens Give us something to talk about that changes all of these mock drafts because it is bound to happen. And Cody, Pull this up here. The Carolina Panthers might be interested. Look, wide receiver is not the only need. It is not the only need. The Carolina Panthers need a lot of help, and they need a lot of help in the secondary. What's this about right here? Yeah, so there is a player uh, who goes uh, by the name of Mike Sandstrill, uh, who has been steadily moving up people's boards. He is a corner, uh, and uh, Tony Pauline, uh, says, so where could uh, Sane still end up? People I've spoken with believe the Carolina Panthers at the top of round two are a possibility. Uh, and this is him releasing some other possibilities. But um, we also know that the Panthers, um, when looking at some of the, the list of players that they've brought in, they've brought in cornerback Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Uh, I mean, they are looking to add to that defensive backfield. Uh, Tony, as we see more and more, I really do feel like one of these two picks is going to be a, a defensive player, either be they on the line or be they in the defensive backfield. I tell you, this is I'm not really in love with this person. Now, hey, they might be but awesome. he's 
Five ten. To, so I only, he what, listed as five nine on the NFL on NFL. Uh, my, the one I looked at pounds. said five ten, one hundred eighty five pounds. But I'm not gonna lie, he reminds me of Dante Jackson. Right, right. Way, a little smaller than what I'm hoping for. Uh, Cody, what I was thinking about what would send the Panther Twitter into a tailspin. Um, look, I think uh, if my my instinct says that if we stick stand pad at 33 and 39 and we make those two picks that you're going to get one offensive player, and one defensive player. That's my that's like my my gut feeling is that you're going to try to have two players that are impact that are going to be starters right out the gate. I don't see the Panthers double dipping at wide receiver, even if people say there's a reason to and stuff. I think it would kind of be a malpractice to addressing some of the other needs. But what would happen if the Carolina Panthers pick two defensive players at 33 and 39 and they pick <laughs> a corner and that linebacker? That's my right now. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for it. Break the Dude, fuck internet, Dan Peyton Morgan. Wilson, Peyton Wilson and Nate Wiggins. Dude, now, I'm Peyton here Wilson for it. And this is this Sanistril guy, right? Imagine if those are yeah. the two picks. Imagine the fucking calls that would be coming in to the C3 Panthers draft party. It would break the internet. <laughs> oh, dude, that'd be insane. I'm that here for insane. it. I'm rooting for it just for that. Yeah. Dude, you have to always root for chaos. Yeah. You have to, man. Um, so that's my my gut feeling, CK, is that we pick one offensive player, one defensive player. I'm rooting for us to pick a corner and a linebacker. Mm. Or what if we picked a linebacker and a defensive end and you're like and everybody's like, What the fuck, man? Oh no, this <laughs> wide receiver. Look at look at he's not mingo. But 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 were you like man, yeah. the fucking it would be awesome. It would be great for the show. Um, it would certainly be chaos <laughs> to say the least. Um, there's going to be a lot of people who will, um, you know, it, it, to Cody's point, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to look at this and be like, how are you a, like, even if you're an, you know, a fan of getting Ayuk or you're a fan of drafting a wide receiver, I think we all agree that, that window that Cody's talking about for Bryce Young drafting two uh, defensive players in the second round, Ain't it? You know that's not going to be. I'm how here you for it, dude. I'm. I think it could. Um, I think now that here is the what would the way it could happen is that if this wide receiver class is so deep that you think there are guys that are going to be there at 64 that you can work with that are just as good, but the dip from who is the Wiggins guy? Tell me about this. I know who Peyton Wilson is because he plays at NC State and Luke Keekley and everybody fucking and he runs like a four four. To me, this is almost too good to be true. And what I mean by that is like if Peyton uh, Wilson is there, how can that not be the pick? And what I mean by that, you've got Dan Morgan who was a stud linebacker. linebacker. You have a history of the Panthers having important uh, linebackers. The greatest Panther linebacker in Luke Keekley is the tutor of this guy. He's been training him. Right. He like, models his like, game like, after how, him. Dude, like, what? Did, how is Dan Morgan not going to make Yeah, this that's what I'm saying. Now, but uh, Tony. Who's, the, who's uh, the Wiggins guy? Well, so Tony, uh, well, hold on. Before we move, move off of Peyton Wilson, does it bother you? That he has had two ACL tears in his career. Already. Are they both? A, are they same knee? I don't know if they're the same knee. ACL. Not. Yes. ACL. Okay. I was having a talk with a friend of mine at work. He's a Panthers fan, and he loves this guy. Right. He goes, "Oh, uh, Thomas Davis. Thomas Davis. You know." I, I, the thing for me. And then the other thing, and he, I mean, and he is right in some ways, as he said, this is just because you've had injuries in the past doesn't mean you're a injury prone or B like, it's going to be a problem in the future, right? You can have an injury and then go on to have a good career. You can have players too, who have never had injuries. And then all of a sudden become fucking injury problems. I don't know what JC Horn's injury history was, but. Like he's not right. So there's no, it's not a given that he is injury prone. My 
concern with the injuries, Cody, is that when you have those major injuries, you're never really the same. So, like, is there, say you don't have any injuries at all, and you go on to have a good career. In five years, is that knee fucking a problem, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, like, not as good as it was. Well, and, and more than just his knee, apparently his he's had injury history dating back to high school. And, and that makes it a risk. Yeah, it's yeah a risk. that's what I'm saying. You have and to weigh other, all this stuff, man. You want you have the to weigh story. It. But the other part of this, too, that I look at is Thomas Davis did not like a lot of people will talk about like he had some of his best years but he also became a different player right he wasn't the player that he was after those acls i don't know if that's true what i mean by that is wasn't he more of a safety style linebacker only for no only for when he was coming out of college and then they converted him to a linebacker we actually don't really know what kind of player he was because the injuries came early right but that's my point. Uh, is, but he is, did come on to go be like, I tell you this, is Thomas Davis. First, is he the first person to come back from three? Was it three for him? Probably. I think it was three. Was hmm. he like he was the first player to come back from that type of injury that many times? Did he have a comeback him, and the then year? the and then the next player that the same guy that did it was that running back for the Bills did it, who was from Miami or something like this. And you used to think an ACL was a fucking end, right? Like done. And then well, it used a, to be way back in the fucking right. day. That was your career. Right. But like AJ Brooks said, this is now here. This makes it more complicated when you're talking about this. Is that like, yeah, you can talk about these injury histories and all these concerns, but the fucking dude run, excuse me, my language shouldn't say that. Uh, he ran a four four three with two ACL injuries. Like this mug's th- like, gosh, what would he have ran with? Yeah, this one, yeah, yeah, dude, the homeboy can fly, man. I mean, dude, if he's able to, to stay healthy, um, yeah, Wilson Wilson suffered a second knee injury during summer training camp and redshirted his true freshman season at NC State. Uh, he led the Wolf Pack with sixty nine tackles during his redshirt freshman season. He made 108 tackles with uh, 11 and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, and two interceptions, and was named uh, ACC First Conference. Um, dude, he's yeah, he's he received the Buckus Award. Uh, he is also a Buckus Award winner too. It was man. Luke Keekley as well. Yeah. But to be fair, with that, uh, the argument of that to being too much of a risk. Uh, it's almost as much of a risk as going into the season with an uh, injury-prone cornerback as your number one cornerback. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, good point. Well, I think this right. is what I would love about this. First, if Luke Keekley believes in you, I believe in you. Right? Sure. It's like uh, that sure, to we can me, say different. Uh, that to me is like he's he's like uh, he's arguably the most untouchable and uncontroversial Panther player in history. And what I mean by maybe like is Steve Smith, you could say they had that kind of decline for a minute. And then he comes back and has that second wave. He had a couple, you know, he's beating players up. Keekly, man, for the years that he played, like nobody had any question that he was the best motherfucker. Right. Like there's no no hesitation. Like he's an untouchable. There's a zero criticism other than, hey, got concussions in the career. Kind of like Dan Morgan in so many ways. So to me, if he believes in him, I believe in him. The other thing I love about what I miss, I fucking miss. The Panthers have had a history of badass linebackers. You go back to the first Super Bowl, Dan Morgan and Will Witherspoon combined for like 40 fucking tackles, some like crazy number. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just insane what these guys put together, like two guys, like with 20 tackles. I miss Beeson and Davis out there just fucking demolishing guys. I miss Luke Keekley demolishing dudes. And to me, somebody brought this up about Thomas Davis or somebody in the chat said the most badass thing about Thomas is like he uh, NFC championship game, which is wild. He broke his arm and then a week and a half, late, two weeks later, he's in the Super Bowl with all of that. You saw all that Thomas Davis would fucking ring your bell. And I kind of, I think that's why we sort of like Luvu. 
you know, is this kind of reckless abandon. Thomas Davis, I have some gifs of Thomas Davis saved of just him fucking putting people in the dirt. And he's like a Mack truck. Did you see it? Mm, probably shouldn't make this. See that guy get the Lumberton video that's floating around about the guy, the carjacking thing? That got no, I saw you comment on it, but I didn't they see took it the yet. video down now. Uh he never mind. But he would hit them like a Mack truck, dude. And I miss that. I miss a fucking linebacker just laying you the fuck out. And we haven't had it since Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis. No, so I'm sure here have. for it. We sure have it. Um do we have any more calls? Uh, yeah, I do think we have another. We listen to Kyle. Here we go. By the Joe. way, shout out to Alan Lewis hey Jones. It's appreciate good. you, bro. All right. Appreciate it, man. I'll make some howl, a.k.a. Joey the Blind Panther. Yeah. You want to know what kind of team we're going to be this year? I can see it. Based on the moves we're making in free agency, Based on what we're probably going to do in the draft, which we only have four picks. And um, we need a wide receiver, a center. We probably need another corner because we know J.C. Horn's going to get hurt at halftime week one. Uh, so we probably need another corner. And we need another offensive lineman because... It's always good to have depth. Guys, like the prior problem last year, we had no depth, especially on defense. But we're going to be the type of team this coming year that is going to be fun to watch because we're going to score a lot of points. We're not going to win a lot of games because we're not going to have our defense yet. But guess what? That's why it's called a rebuild. Mm. That's why... You know, things like that aren't done overnight. Like, we're going to actually get better, but we're going to get better in, you know, in increments, in pieces. And over time, it'll translate to the whole team, or it should, but, you know, with the Panthers, I guess that's any team. But when you get one thing sorted out, another problem springs up. Anyway, guys. For a great call, Joey. Wakanda uh, forever. Wakanda. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, I get it, man. Hey, by the way, we have a great uh uh a great fan who just decided to drop a love bomb on us. Matthew Brown with the nine 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 says I know we're all a little cautious when it comes to Dan Morgan. For me, at least he's making decisive decisions. He's dealing with the hand that Scott Federer left him. Thank you, Matthew. I think a lot of people are thinking that, man, that Amen. he's done good with what he's been given. We spent a lot of time talking about Dan Morgan's uh, debut as GM. You heard a lot of when uh, a lot of questions or a lot of Panther fans, look, is you just got to expect Panther fans to be negative at anything at this point, right? I mean, and it's understandable to a degree. It's like it's this fucking long road, these coaches, these disasters. So there was so much of this conversation of Dan Morgan being connected with Scott Fitter, right? And CK, we had it talking about is like, is it right to have one foot in the past door and one foot in the new door? Should you just completely break clean? these di different types of things. So there was a lot of, then, then you get other people that were saying, look, is Dan Morgan um, can't be completely absolved of the sins of Scott Fitter. As in he's in that room. Is he banging the table? You know, is that their best, they're good friends. They live on the same block, right? So you can't just completely say Dan Morgan has no fingerprints of Scott, like just picking up the pieces entirely. But I think this is, I'm with Matthew Brown on, uh, on this. And I think we've been positive on this show. I've liked the vision that Dan Morgan has put forward is that I think there's been a decisive goal and saying, look, is Brian Burns. We'd like you, 
but uh, we don't have the, it's not the right time for us to pay defensive players. We got to get some offensive line here. We go and get some kind of, who knows if they're going to be great. The hunt guy is going to, is kind of, has been a, you know, a kind of a, 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 a he's been great, which we have to go back. I saw something weird about him coming out of college uh, that people were saying he was lackadaisical at one point. We're going to go back and look at that. But he, his plan, his vision, is he knows he's got to figure out what Bryce Young's got, right? He has to learn more about Bryce Young, and he went and did the things in free agency that you actually could to do it, right? You go out and you get, you start building uh, the offensive line to help figure out if Bryce can, with protection, can be better. And in the process, you're able to at least get a one-year rental in Deontay Johnson who has shown some flashes of being decent. So you add a little bit. I think Dan Morgan has done. I like just the, just like he said, the decisiveness of the vision. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that they have a plan. They have a vision for what they've, they've been trying to build in this front office. And the, the funny thing is we're not really going to see what their true intent is until we're done with the draft and seeing what positions they decide to prioritize, what they want to move up for. Remember, this time last year, we were having the conversation of whether or not they panicked when they moved up into the third round to draft uh, Oregon defensive end or edge DJ Johnson, who has yet to make a real big impact for the team yet. So, you know, how many positions do they feel they have to take in this year's draft, you know, because they obviously felt they needed an end and they traded up to get one. So would they be willing to do the same thing? I don't know. We'll have to find out. CK. Mm. I mean, uh, listen, I, I'm, uh, you were hesitant I, about Dan Morgan, I right? Mean, you I, were the, not hes- I, like, I not that you didn't wrong. like him, but you were saying is, and, and maybe I'm wrong. Am I remembering right? Is that no? I it's was not about I Dan Morgan. It's about starting fresh. Right. That's exactly has been my concern with with Dan Morgan from the get go. Was, uh, you know, you you're as we talked about, his fingerprints are always going to be considered a part of this this team. You know, the team that was built by Scott Fitterer. Um, and I, it's not fair to him, but at the same time, it's, it's also pretty fair, you know, in today's world that we live in, like name another situation where a, a guy is a part of a regime like this and he gets a GM role. Like, that's why my hesitation was there. Right. I also, my question though, is Scott Fitter was, is he, was he really as bad as we want like is he i mean i'm not saying he was good you know it's right i'm not saying he was good but is he kind of the punching bag of panther nation at this point because we have nobody else to punch we don't well, have it's Matt also Rula you're punch. always going to be have... able to you're always going to be able to make the conversation and rightfully so that we will never know what kind of power he had the first two years that he was here which is time when he's on the clock so right. if he was being judged for the mistakes of Matt Rule, then yeah, he was behind the curve. But dude, it also doesn't work when none of your draft picks ever hit in a real way. And well, if JC he- Horn comes out and puts the seatbelt strap on, like everybody's showing him right now, smiling and seatbelting it. Brady Christensen has had some success. If Tommy Trimble can come together this year you had chuba hubbard who had a good season last year i mean those are three or three players you know i i feel like this is scott fitter and i don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole but it's easy to talk shit about him but he also was trying to negotiate certain like circumstances and when it comes to getting baker He's getting a lot of pressure from the owner, from the coach to go get Matt Stafford, to get Deshaun, and you couldn't make it happen. So then you got to get Baker. Then you got, you know, the Sam. Like, yeah, those things weren't good and didn't work out, but I don't know if it was just in a vacuum Scott Fitter or saying, I want to get Sam Darnold. You know, I mean, I think there were other factors that also compelled him to make those moves. 
Sure. Right. They might not have been good. So I, I mean, I look, I'm not saying he's like the, the dude or nothing is just the question is, or is, is he the only, he's certainly not the only reason for failure. And we really just need fucking JC Horn to be good. We really do, man. If he's able this to year. really, if he's Actually, able to shut shit down this year and play a full season and put the seat we down desperately on need it, dude. Yeah, man. We, we don't have the that, horses man. in the other positions. You know what I'm saying? Like you actually, that would help other positions play more freely. How about this? I believe if he doesn't finish this year, and if he ends the year on IR, this is his final year as a Panther. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, that I don't think that that's even a question at this point. I'm a kind of interested. Is this is what kind of season does he have to have this year to be a future Panther? Yeah, I mean, what if he does ball out this year? Right? Are you going to pay, him, are, are you gonna pay him based off of one year of production? Right? It's oh god, what a fucking con paradox or conundrum that's going to be. I know, man. All right, uh, what else do we got? Is that it? Uh, I mean, we Anything have a else? just a list of um, just some of the players that we know that the Panthers um, have met with. And uh, this is important, folks, the, because if you look at the history of teams and the players they draft, they rarely draft players that they haven't met with. So right. just because they meet with these players doesn't mean you're going to draft them. But if you are trying to forecast guys that potentially could be drafted by the Carolina Panthers, it seems reasonable to look at the list because it's like 80. I mean, I'm just making this percentage up, but it feels like it's like 85 percent or 90 percent of the players that any teams draft. They've actually had some sort of. Yeah, the chances of us drafting a player that isn't on this list is next to none. But they have to fall. Saying? They have to, you have to have that trade opportunity. Right. Like you're not meeting with Brock Bowers. Right. You know, they have to be a player that falls or something like that, that you didn't expect to be available. So who are these? Tell, tell us, run down the list and tell us who these guys are. Well, I mean, or just what some you players, know about any of them. I mean, just some players of, of note. I mean, a lot of the bigger name wide receiver prospects. So Xavier Worthy, who broke the combine record, is on the list. Uh, Jalen McMillan from Washington, another big time talent uh, on the he list. Wide receiver? Yes, also a wide those, receiver. Is that one of those guys? Is this the LSU guy? Aren't these guys like. Uh, LSU like, guy is Brian Thomas Jr. Are those all first round prospects? Yes, those guys are. Gen, oh, uh, they well, seem to be for, first round talent. I need to fan the, fi fan the flames of trading up right there. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, so they've met Lad McConkey, they've met Troy Franklin, uh, Keon Coleman, uh, and Nia Smith. Who are these? Um, then, they, then they've met local people from the area. My boy Will Shipley out of Clemson, dude. If we draft Will Shipley, I'd be one happy mofo, dude. That'd be my draft. What about? Um, um, there's no Peyton Willis on this list. Do you? No, but then he was on the other because... one. We are meeting with him though. Oh, okay. He is on another list. Um, so we are meeting him at some point, yes. And shout out to my bastard son, White Chocolate, who had a great meme uh, to Cody, which was, it was the Uno card that you get the right, the response on, <laughs> you know, which I which is oh, weird to me. And, you, and he said, draft a Clemson player or pick 25. And then it showed right, the he has the million card. <laughs> oh, I was, I was crying at that man. shit. Such All an right. ass. So yeah, we are. Uh, there he is at the bottom, Peyton Wilson. We are going to. Uh, uh, He's on Peyton the list. Wilson in. Also, the center out of Oregon, oh. uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, who many people believe to be one of the best center prospects in the whole draft. I don't see the Wiggins guy name up here. Can I ask uh, you a he question? Was on the other list. He was, right. was. Ooh. He's right he here. For, we, uh, they met. They had a formal meeting with them, and they met with the Magic Pro Day. When we were when we had drafted like Matt Corral, like it felt like we had all of our draft visits in the same day. Like how? Yeah. How is this so sparsely, you know, scheduled at this point? 
Because, I mean, they had, like, pretty much every single one of those 30 players in at the same time, and they were going through, like, meetings and stuff, because they had that Yeah, whole... people are walking in the door as others are walking in, like, it's like if a girl's well, walking had, out of your house. Remember they had, like, the post-production stuff, or the production stuff that they did on YouTube, and, like, it was, they were all sitting in the room, like, they were, watch, like, you know how, like, a team would normally do. Yeah, the well, I feel like uh, this is more, I feel like that would have been more of the anomaly CK, I feel like this is more the traditional. I know way. that's it's like that's, where they have spread them out. You know, you're All right. That's I, mean, I would have thought can. that as well. Um, um Matthew Brown coming back for more. Appreciate it, brother. Yes, sir. This is Dan Morgan and Dave Canales. Also, for me, bring the vibe of these two are not playing around, i.e., calling out the roster in a press conference. Yeah, maybe some accountability for once. <sighs> I think the in, the interesting part of hiring younger people, unproven people. Now, this isn't always a benefit, right? But you don't. Ha I mean, there's there's pros and cons with anything, right? You bring in somebody who's experienced, you get pros and cons with them. You bring in somebody who's inexperienced, you get pros and cons with them. They don't have the luxury of fucking around. I also would like to say that I almost feel. Like we have a bit of an advantage by not having a first round pick because we can narrow down our search results as opposed to having to essentially have our 30, you know, top 30 be pretty much every single top first round draft pick that, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then every top second round, like it kind of takes, it does put uh, a little bit off the table or like you're saying, oh, look, I have a lot of, I'm really interested in how this, Dave Canal is higher. It's going to work out. Um, I'm high on it. I'm interested. Um, I mean, like you could call it false optimism or whatever. I mean, I don't think it's good. I'm not like saying it will work out. But again, we've had this conversation a lot uh, going throughout the last couple of weeks is to me, this is the right type. This is like, and, and this kind of goes for when we talk about those tight ends or these like, Sometimes, like, the best players that you talk about, all the draft gems, you always bring up Puka Nakua. What's his, is that his name? Yeah. He felt like he came to you. You didn't go get, you know what I'm saying? You didn't a, yeah, you picked it. him up in the fifth round. A bunch Comes of teams you, passed on. And it feels like this is maybe this kind of just is settling in the right way instead of us chasing Matt Rule and then chasing this and chasing that. Maybe this is the more natural fall to us kind yeah. of opportunity but hey i'm trying to find anything and everything to love happy smiley uh dave canales we're gonna have the most happy smiley press conferences afterwards dave canales always happy uh bryce young always happy always pop like it's just gonna be it I might become what, Tony, uh, we better do good or else it's gonna become nauseating I tell you what, all of the female Panther fans are rooting for these dudes big time. Uh, no doubt. No doubt. They're rooting for them. They want to see these gentlemen up at the podium, if you know what I'm saying. All right. What else uh, we got? Uh, oh, we got another final, too after this. But this is the final thing we have for the whole show. Okay. So uh, it is from our boy Ryan Fowler, who uh, basically rattled off what he believed to be the first or the 14 worst signings in all of free agency. Um, I don't know what exactly what number this listed at for him, but um, one of the people that he listed was Jadavion Clowney. Uh, he, he said that he's basically a boomer bust prospect coiled up uh, in a frame. Uh, at times, he can completely overwhelm opposing linemen. Other times, he disappears for weeks on end. But you can say Clowney is playing his best football of his career with 11 sacks. In two of his last three campaigns, he'll take on a new role in Carolina where he's expected to lead a youth-infused group of pass rushers behind him, something he's never done in his prior five stops. Uh, what do we think about uh, Ryan Fowler shitting all over our boy? Uh, I don't think he's wrong. I don't is, think it he's a boomer, is it a boomer bus sign? No, I, I don't think it's either. I think you're just getting a pretty good defensive end. I'm going to be real. I kind of agree with him. 
I think we're going to love this or it's going to feel like another Justin Houston. He's not going to be anywhere near Justin. I think his floor is higher we, than Justin hope. Houston's was. Yeah. So I'm not worried about the ceiling for these guys. I'm interested in the floor. So if I guess if he gets hurt, look, I don't think he's going to be a liability. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe so either. Um, as long as like he's if you healthy. want him to be, if you're thinking of Jadavion Clowney coming out of as the number one overall pick or whatever, then you will be disappointed, right? Like oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like it. thinking of Chase. Like if you got Chase Young, but now with me, like imagine getting Chase Young if the if he didn't have the neck shit going on and the Panthers got him. If your version of bust is thinking about what Chase Young was drafted to be then it's going to be a bust. But if your version of success is drafting him to be a contributing positive player on the team, that's what I think Clowney can be. You know, I mean, yeah, like, I think so too. I mean, I definitely feel better about him than Justin Houston, but to me, it's like, you know, if you're a South Carolina fan, you're happy. You're, you're happy that he's from the Carolinas, but, um, I, I don't know. It's I'm hoping that we'll get the same amount of production. I would like to get ten plus sacks out of him. Hey, if we get eight, if that's gonna I'm happen, I, I I don't know. If we get eight, you are we're living. Your ladder, you're 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 getting what you paid for. Yep. CK, any thoughts on Boomer Bust Clowny? Um, I mean, I think that's always gonna be what uh, any free agent we get, it's going to be the same with Stefan Gilmore. If we end up going that route with him. Um, I mean, it's not wrong. I mean, it's not, mm. a. I, I don't think it's like a, a make or break type of thing. I mean, it wasn't like it was a, a, a world beater contract that we ended up giving him. I mean, right. he got a decent contract. Don't get me wrong, but in the long run, it was actually pretty team friendly when you realize how it all worked out, you know? Yeah. I just think if you expect 11 sacks, you're, you're, that's probably too that's high, but yeah. you might hit it. But if that's what you expect, then yeah, he's going to be a bust. Right. But if you think, Hey, you're going to player that can come in here, contribute, getting the run defense better, potentially have seven, eight sacks, maybe hit double digits. If things go well, then to me, that's a boob. Yeah. You know? So, all right, let's take the right now, the last, the last call of the night and why some fools up. What's up, boys? Uh, first of all, keep pounding. Um, Thank you. Keep pounding. My question has to do with uh, trading for Ayuk or letting Dan Morgan uh, have his first draft fully, his first full draft. Um, do you trust him to make a trade like that, or would you trust him to trade up for? player like Bowers will be listening. Oh, uh, I like the last end of the call, right? Is that by throwing in the Bowers, that puts a little kind of a goalpost for me to make the, you know, kind of w when I say trust them. Look, I, I think if you trade for Brandon Ayuk, as long as you're not allocating crazy assets, right, of trade, of draft capital, the only real risk is the money. I think is that it would take far more. I would be far more skeptical and it would require more trust in me and belief and faith and optimism and Dan Morgan to go after moving up into the first round than it would to be trade for. Brand I think Brandon Ayuk is like, that's not really us fucking testing his secret abilities. Right. You know, you're picking a player that you know can play. It's just really about the money at that point. Um, so the trust factor, guys, on Dan Morgan, and it's kind of tough to ask that, isn't it? Do you trust him? We don't even know if he's ever drafted anybody. We've never had anything like that. I don't distrust him. Yeah. But I would say there's more risk in trading for Brock Bowers than there is trading for Brandon Ayuk. Thoughts? I mean, yeah, I, you said more. You said more risk for Brock Bowers. Yeah, trading up, you would have to allocate yeah. more. Look, it would cost you less money 
but it would cost more draft assets. That's what Brock sure. Bowers would cost. Is like you wouldn't you wouldn't have to pay him a bazillion dollars, but you I would mean, have to pay the, for him in the draft assets. Brandon Ayuk, you wouldn't have to trade a ton of draft assets, but you would have to pay a lot of money. Right, but the yin to that yang is that if Brock Bowers ends up being a damn good player, you're getting a young tight end on a rookie contract with a fifth year option for the foreseeable future the, without having to break off as much as you would for Brandon Ayuk. Right, right that's the and upside keep in mind of the it. value of a tight end, Tony. The value that you're getting someone that theoretically will be able to pass protect, run block, and be able to go deep for passes. Like that that checks a lot of boxes in an offense that needs a lot. You've talked about the upside, the long bet. Like that's like Yes, you know what? If you bet a hard four rolling craps, the odds are the payout is better than betting the field, right? Yeah, the pay. I mean, the upside is that's all counting on the bet hitting. But if we were going to make the odds six to one, five to one, 20, whatever the fuck the odds makers of it actually hitting, I think the odds are longer and Brandon, I mean, Brock Bowers working out. It's more risky than Brandon Ayuk would be. Uh, CK, settle the debate. Help this um, caller out. Which is, uh, first, which, when it comes to the trust level of Dan Morgan, do you trust him more going after Brock Bowers and handling this through the draft? Or do you um, think that trading for Brandon Ayuk would indicate uh, more confidence in Dan Morgan. Um, so, yeah, I think dra- going into the draft is giving more confidence. Uh, I 100% agree with that. That's kind of what I was saying earlier is like, it's better for sh- proving what he's capable of doing if he's able to do that as opposed to the alternative. Like, if he's able to actually go after and get somebody out of the draft, that's what we've been missing. You know, but I know we've been so up to adds another layer of risk. It does add a re- layer of risk, but again, that's that's basically what you'd be doing with going and getting. Uh, I mean, there's still an equal amount of risk with regard to Brandon Ayuk. There's not. No, there's less because he's actually proven. It's not just that. It's that. It's I. I agree it's a that different there is, risk. It's a different risk because what you you are giving away a se- potentially a second round pick, maybe even more. I don't know. Um, and not only that, you're giving him a contract that's probably going to be bigger than most wide receivers in the league are getting right now. Um, so you're taking that risk on top of it. I, I, it is a risk. I mean, I'm not saying it's, a uh, you know, trading up for the number one overall pick risk, but it is a risk. And I wouldn't even say that it's that much of a risk as I, I don't know that it's much of a, if I were to try to rank the risks, it's a different risk, but I don't know that I would make it much different from trading up into the one. Wow. I disagree. Um, I, I find this kind of like if we just think in money betting odds, and by the way, you can go to bet 365 and get $150 in bonus bets. If you use our link in the show description, if you deposit $10 and bet five bucks, I think this is like, sometimes look, if you bet the favor on the money line and you bet a hundred dollars, you might get 90 bucks, right? It pays out. But if you bet the riskier team to win, you get plus money. Right. And so I think when you talk about the upside of Brock Bowers, that's the kind of concept of plus money. I think when you bet on Brandon Ayuk, you're taking a less risky bet already. And I don't know if you guys play Keno at all. Um, sometimes I'll play it. I don't have, usually have ever any cash. And I always, I actually did hit Keno one time. Crush. I had the best you could ever do on Keno. And not the best, like not the 10 pick. But if you flip the, you go to the bar and you look at the Keno slip, you flip it over. It has pick, you pick one number, two numbers, three numbers, all the way up to 10. You get the most money if you pick 10 and you hit all 10, right? I mean, that's like the bananas. You win 250,000 or a million bucks or whatever it is. But the best official odds, like if you look at one to one or like four, four to one, I think it is, or something like this, that the number four picks, the four numbers. They, uh, it's the greatest odds of winning some sort of money back, right? Like you have the best odds out of all the seven. I think the seven numbers is the next best. <clears throat> One time, and I've never won at this shit, dude. I bought a scratch off ticket yesterday randomly and never do it. Hey, loss. 
fucking why is, but one time i bet this keno slip dude and i did the multiplier which is the you take a and i want to say i did two bucks i can't remember what it was but i had the multiplier the most when you do the extra dollar you double your ticket you get the multiplier and it's just a random number and sometimes most of the time it's like one two five the best it can be is a 10 time multiplier so that 10 time multiplier hit. I also believe that part of this is because I wasn't watching the numbers. Like if you don't care about winning, you win more than if you care about winning. So if you're like watching the numbers or less these superstitions. So I did this and it hit the 10 time multiplier and I hit all four numbers and I was standing outside hanging out and I looked through the door. Like you could see the TV through the door at the bar. And I said, holy shit, 11? I do 111, 56, 63. Those are my numbers. One for Cam Newton. 11 for me. 56 for Lawrence Taylor, 63. I don't know why I do 63. I haven't figured that one out. Hit all four. I won 1500 bucks, dude. Had to pay taxes on that bitch, though. It's like the best you could do with a $2 bet or something like that. I fucking hit it. That would be Brock. Brock Bowers is the seven pick. Brandon Ayuk is the four pick. Back to the point. Uh, Cody Lack. We don't get any more football. Uh, <laughs> Eleven is for Brand. You know what? Uh, Promise QS Panda. He said, uh, "Oh, 11. Oh, 11, The number. I thought you meant the eleven pick in Kino. Uh, no, eleven is for Tony Dunn. Born at eleven on, on 11, 11 at eleven eleven p.m." Um, who is me? That's why I got no, who else? You said someone else's, right? Oh, he put uh, Brandon LaFell, his number was 11. Oh, okay, okay. I sometimes do 22 for Christian McCaffrey. Um, that's how I pick my number, anyway. Um, let's ice some fools up if you guys ain't got anything else to discuss. I'm ready, uh, to get out of here. And uh, this is hey, you introduce it, bro. Yeah, I mean, the longest running. Panthers segment on the longest running Panthers podcast, both historically and the amount of time we will sit here and blabber on any given Tuesday. But we do it for you. It's time to ice some fools up. Toughen up, get your act together. Let's ice some fools up. Ice up, son. Ice up. Uh, the real C3 AP69 is always a good bet, too. My wife always does that one. It does hit a lot. Uh, Russell, uh, wait, what am I saying? This is our homage to Steve Smith. It's where we tell someone to ice up, toughen up, to get it together. Right? Everybody's fair game. We can talk football. We can talk about life. But we're going to ice some fools up tonight. What do you guys got for me? Um, I have a fine one. Okay. It's just whenever you're in a... Whenever you see people in a street fight, you always cross your fingers at the chance that somebody is going to get courageous enough to do some flying shit. And uh, this one uh, flying failed to deliver. Punch. So just wait for it. You'll know it when you see it. All right, he's going to get. So, boom, he can stomp oh. out. Oh. oh. Wait oh. for it. Boom. Oh. Oh. Worked. He came running in with a flying sidekick. Probably saved his buddy's life that was stopped. God, on the that ground. poor guy is oh, fucking God. hurt, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, let's laugh, Dad. Oh, oh, it's the second. Oh, he didn't even get the flying sidekick. Awesome. Who are yeah, icing up here? That, and dude, uh, I mean, listen, if you're going to get hit by a flying sidekick, that's bad enough. But to have the moment you got hit by one recorded for the world to see, uh, dude, that's up, son. That deserves and, a nice Especially bit. doing a bitch thing like what he just did. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, CK, you got ice up for us? I, I do. And mine's, uh, again, it's uh, it's the media. Uh, just even just go, I, I'll, I'll talk about CNN. And everybody knows here I'm not a Trump fan, and I'm probably the farthest thing. I wouldn't say the farthest thing from a Trump fan, but 
uh, CNN, obviously, uh, right now they have the juror selection stuff going on for his criminal uh, trial and what have you. Um, and I got irritated because there was a video that they titled, How Easy Would It Be for a Trump Supporter to Lie His Way uh, to, try to Lie Their Way uh. Onto the Juror and to the Jury? And I'm just sitting there thinking from that perspective, like, why, why can't you just say juror? Because you don't think that there is an equal, if not more, people that want to be on that jury to convict him, right? Wouldn't it right? just be as easy to lie if you wanted to get to? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I'm. I don't really have an opinion about Donald Trump whatsoever, whether it's positive or negative. Why? Why does it have to be well, like speaking to their audience? I know, I know, and that's 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 the irritation that I have, and that's one of the reasons that I think the media has lost a tremendous amount of trust, and um, you know why why Joe Rogan beats their numbers on a I regular know. basis. I love Joe. Um, so ice him up for me. Ice up. All right. Uh, my ice up. I got two for us. I did. Um, we're not going to talk. I wanted to get you. I've been talking about that guy that shot and got killed and stuff like that. It's been a interesting discussion. But here. All right. We'll take some more potential deaths that uh, we may find amusement in. Oh God! Oh, and, uh, I saw this, dude. This to me. Oh, dude! Look, I can go ahead and tell you a million problems with this image right away. Right, it's setting up a swing. It looks like on a cliff. Now, this could be misleading. For all we know, who knows what's on the other side? It doesn't look like there's a ton of regulations in this region. <laughs> no. But this already this swing, but it's a porch swing. And you know what? I, when I watched it, I knew something wasn't going to be good. I had no idea what was going to be bad. Like, I mean, I had some ideas. It did not disappoint. Oh. I thought they were going to just fly out on their own, but it hits that pole. You gotta put a seatbelt on that bit. Oh God! Whoever uh, thought but, of all right, am I am I wrong in saying why the fuck are you even tempting fate like that, dude? Like, well, first why of are all, you on the probably, swing? Probably. Look, it looks like two girls. These dudes are like one of them could be a mom. It's like, oh guys, come on, don't be pussy. You know, like they're egging them on. Yes, don't tempt fate. But whoever designed the damn thing, this guy pushing it. That's who my eyes up is. Put a seatbelt on that fucking porch swing, bro. So I take it that they had the be deceased after. That. I don't know. I don't know what the over that edge looks like. For all we know, it could just be like a little roll down. Who knows? Dude, the way their me, voices, when their I voices saw this, went to terror oh, in no time. Oh, everybody watched it too. So when I started this video, Cody. Like I said, I didn't know what was going to happen. And so I was thinking maybe the swing would f completely topple over, like top end. I thought maybe they could just launch out. I thought maybe those, um, the, the chains could break. I didn't think of the most simple fucking problem. Like this isn't even, you know what I'm saying? It's like just hitting that hole think of like pushing somebody on a swing you automatically get that little bit of uh, like that's that gonna happen. he didn't he didn't hit she didn't hit the pole the girl on the left is the one that actually put her feet down no watch i think the watch swing no, watch watch, the swing watch hits the post no dude. watch how far yeah. away she is from that post watch this watch this nah. they're fall she's nah, far away hold on, one second. hold on a second watch this watch this watch her feet watch her feet <laughs> I think she hit yeah, the, the girl the on the left. The, the girl on the hit left. That back, you, you heard, you heard the bing. You heard the bing. I did, I did hear that bing. And maybe she reached her leg out, like, oh shit, I don't want to do this. Hey man. So yeah, this the girl on the stop. left, her feet is what stops the swing on the left side. Yeah, but they would have been twisting in the wind like crazy people anyway. Once you get a swing yeah, going... Yeah, why like, are you even on there? Why I mean, are you even sitting I, on that swing in the first place, dude? I know. Um, this is Rockhead81. He said, how about the guy who got run over in the Fayetteville trying to stop a carjacker and then got his car jacked and then hit him and killed him? Dude, they took the video down. It was so bad. I've never seen somebody... Is that what you were talking about? 
Yeah, and I kind of wanted to talk about it. Like, I don't have so many. I don't have an opinion. I've got mixed feelings on it. I do think it's wild that he shot into that car at point blank range so many times and didn't hit anything. I'm almost wondering, did he have like rubber bullets or planks in there by accident? Because like, I didn't hear no glad like, and then this mug just got, I've never seen someone get squared up and run over by a car, not run up. He got hit and then blasted into another planet. So square like that. Guy. <laughs> Sorry. I feel so terrible. I should not have laughed. All right, so, the, um, but you guys can talk to me on Twitter about that one. I have mixed feelings about it. I don't know what to say. Here's my real ice up now. I'm icing up Russell Wilson. This really grinds my gears that people have been going nuts about this. Russell Wilson said these ladies deserve so much more. Praying for the day. And they're referencing Kate and Clark, uh, Caitlin Clark uh, going number over number one overall. She's going to make three hundred thirty eight thousand dollars over four years. She gets paid seventy six thousand dollars a year, or you know eighty thousand dollars a year on average, roughly. So a lot of people have been speaking out about this. Is like uh, whether it becomes about inequity. Whether look, is Caitlin Clark first of all. The reason that anybody cares about this, it was the same way for the first round draft pick last year, folks. You weren't fucking tweeting about it then. Mm. Uh, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark brought so much attention to women's basketball. That's why people like Russell Wilts, uh, Russell Wilson or anybody else knows. Her. I don't even know who the fuck any WNBA player has ever been other than Caitlin Clark at this point. Maybe I would have known one name 10 years ago, the week of the draft. But what this really fucking makes me mad about is like praying for the day. These days, the, look, it's not, uh, I look, I'm not saying that Caitlin Clark isn't like a sort of iconic generational talent that yeah, brings, but people she just might started. actually be the reason salaries one day yes, yeah people are right. just now starting to give a fuck about the dumb WNBA just or because just Caitlin fast. Clark and Andrew Reese would... are going into it the other thing though that really in your look is you could say this is we've had discussions or a lot of people will talk about pro athletes being overpaid right is people who aren't sports fans like that are just kind of random like my wife will say this is it's fucked up that a doctor can't get this money or something or teachers make no money but an nba player makes bazillions of dollars the market does dictate a lot of salaries right or in fact the market dictates probably everything when it comes to the economics of things is russell wilson and the market and the M and the nfl it dictated how much money he could pull so I saw Will Compton from Bustin' with the Boys all talk about this, and he's like, it's not that we're triggered and upset. It's just that we're shocked. So I'm icing up anybody that if, like, this, whatever, what do you call it, faux outrage? What did you used to say? Yeah, virtue this signal, faux out virtue, virtue, this virtue signal. Signal. Faux outrage. Well, why don't you Everybody Google some Dude, Google jobs like, like middle school teacher and then fucking have some outrage about this, praying for the day. Teachers make more than thirty five thousand dollars starting their first year. Like it just to me is like I'm fucking shit. Dude, it's fuck just like that Bill Burr bit where Bill Burr's like, dude, hey, name your fucking favorite WNBA player, stupid. Name me one. Yeah. Name me one player that you've ever supported. And then you know, forever, uh, women like dude, men were the only people even supporting the WNBA. Women didn't even watch it. So but it's I like, yeah, it's it's incredible to me that now people are. Uh, bitching about the money when it's like now the word deserve. I think it was deserve that sent me kind of overboard right is if now Russell Wilson if he would have made this same tweet and he would have talked about how look is the inequities in gender and the prof and professions while the NBA might not be the best place to see you know across the board Women make like sociologists. Like this is this is a ten year old statistic. It's like seventy seven cents less for <clears throat> men at the same position, right? So if you were trying to talk about the overall inequities, 
that gender has in the professional world, I don't think the NBA and the WNBA that's the place to do it. No, that's not the right one to do. Say you deserve, deserve. To me, that's what fucking sent me overboard. Because then I would say Google middle school teacher, look at their salary, and you know what you would say? They deserve more. Praying for the day, Russell Wilson. Fuck you. I'm back to hating Russell Wilson. Yes. Ice up, Russell Wilson. Ice up. Uh, uh, all right. That's the C3 Panthers podcast brought to you by CarolinaCatChronicles.com, where every Tuesday night we chop up the latest Panthers news and opinions from the fan perspective. This week on Friday, we've got the Friday free for all coming up. Next week, we got the Tuesday show leading up to the draft, but special coverage of the NFL draft on Thursday and Friday night. And sometimes the boys will even talk us into doing it on Saturday. Guys, come hang out with the C3 Panthers podcast. This is the 11th annual C3 draft night party. You know what? I'm going to give away some of the Panthers draft hats. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go buy some this week or at least allocate some money to mail them to you from NFL.com. For hanging out with us, guess what? There will be guaranteed two of them given to C3 super fans. How about that? I'm guaranteeing it right now. Mark down my words. C3 super fans, $1.99 a month. You're automatically there's two given away. Then I'll open up the third to everybody. But then they get a third chance too. Cody Lack, it's always been great. CK, love you. Oh, thinking of Joe Riolano. Uh, doing a little bit better. Doing a little bit better. So that's good. 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 Cody Lack, good. take us out of here, brother. C3 Nation, you know we love you. Until next time, keep pounding.